When we went to Germany for our film Pilgrimage, we came to a couple realizations while we were there. First off, why don't we have an Autobahn to do our reviews? Yeah. That's a bummer. And also, we kept seeing all these cars and going, I, wa I want to drive that. Yeah. Cars want to get on camera that we don't even get here. Well, so to help us out, we thought of our friend Tom, who you have seen in our film Pilgrimage. And he already shoots his own top speed runs on the Autobahn. Not only is he our friend, but he is now our European correspondent. So welcome, Tom. Yes, so, but we didn't want to just throw Tom to the wolves and just, just throw him right in the deep end. Right. We thought, you know, we should get some perspective. We're going to be heavily involved in all of his reviews. And we wanted to get his sense on some of the cars we like the most. So we thought we'd start him with the Fiesta ST. The Ford is the perfect first assignment because there's a very good connection between America and Germany there because Ford has been in Germany for so long. Because I'm German, I quite like front wheel drive cars. Now if you grew up in America in the 80s and 90s and your idea of a front wheel drive car is something along the lines of let's say a Chrysler LeBaron, of course you're going to be all American about it and be like front wheel drive car, do we really need that? I picked this car up at Henry Forststrasse, which is in Cologne, Germany, which is where the European market Fiesta gets built. Two implications. A, it's got two doors, and B, which is directly connected to that, looks better than the American version. Now this segment of the review isn't going to be quite as sophisticated as when Paul does it, but to be fair, he did go to school for transportation design, so there's that. Now simply pointing out that the materials in here are a bit low rent, now that is being kept an obvious, isn't it? The dashboard, if you press down on here, if you are the sort of person that presses down on dashboards, that's fairly soft. Down here, a little bit more scratchy. So what? It's not like I care. You put Recaros in any sort of car, immediately the car gets more special. I do wish the seats would go a little bit lower. I can find a very good, but not a perfect seating position. It's a fast car, yet you can still go flat in a lot of places. That makes it such a great road car. I'm having the best time here. Now in America, if you film top speed runs, the hosts use the words allegedly a lot, and it's more like 10 miles an hour, 11 miles an hour. I live in Germany. at around three and a half grand starts to really pull and subjectively there is a lot of power to play with now on the Nürburgring this thing right off the bat I can promise you it's gonna be amazing on a GP track there's always the worry of not having enough power however I drove the Clio 4 RS on the Nürburgring GP track and that has sort of similar power and I didn't feel like I was lacking anything I had a very good time The great thing about the steering rack actually is the steering ratio was not adjusted with a different steering rack. They kept the original steering rack and what they did is they developed a new steering knuckle. And just with that, they gave the car more camber in the front and a quicker steering ratio. Genius! Once you load the tires, the steering gets super aggressive. You can have so much fun whipping, just whipping up these roads. And the rotation is uncanny. Now because the Fiesta is as compact and agile as it is, you can find your own little racing line without ever leaving your own lane. Brake, turn in. Apex, track out. <laughs> now the roads are properly wet now, which means there is less traction. But still, there isn't much understeer. The Potenzas are doing a really good job in the wet. Obviously there's less traction, but essentially it remains the same car. It doesn't go all sketchy. It doesn't start to understeer like nobody's business mid-corner bump coming up, there it is. Fiesta's still not impressed. 
and these sweepers, you can just hammer on the gas still and the torque vectoring figures it out. So I like computers in a car, I like ESC, I like traction control. Well, I like that we have this torque vectoring. This torque vectoring is so spectacular. I still think you should be able to defeat it for the simple reason that it would give you an entirely new experience. Now you have the traditional front wheel drive wrestle going on and you have to take care of the understeer yourself. You don't have anything that simulates a limited slip diff. It's all you. I signed a document stating that I won't take part in any motorsport events. I'm pretty sure they meant no to list and fun. No Nürburgring. Which makes me just a little bit sad because I would have quite liked to see how hard you have to push in a good third gear corner such as let's say Armberg or Ice Kurve before the torque vectoring system actually goes well, you know what? Nope, I've had enough over here. Here, have some understeer. What do you mean not? During the tourist fun, it is a public road and such, not a motorsport event. Hmm. Nope, still pretty sure they meant tourist fun. How can you not love this car? How can you seriously go for a good drive in this car, come back and be like, eh, not doing it for me. You would have to be such an unhappy person. You can properly hoon this car, but so long as you don't do something utterly stupid, you're not gonna end up in any of the Mustang memes. Baby, focus, you're not gonna be on the internet. It's gonna be fine. Tom, that was really great. Thank you for, for shooting that at such a high level. And yeah, was looking forward to driving the Fiesta so long ever since I saw all the reviews, because you've done a couple, three reviews of the car. But Autobahn, we haven't done that. 147 you hit? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. But on the Autobahn, it gets quite busy. Now, if you don't have a lot of experience taking Autobahn sweepers at 230 kph, to you, that's gonna feel borderline sketchy. To people that drive those speeds all of the time, that's lively. That's, that's how the Fiesta is fun on the Autobahn. Nobody is going to let you pass because it's like, after all, this little Fiesta. I ain't clean in the left lane, right? <laughs> you mentioned the Clio, and I'm curious to see what you think about how that and the Fiesta compared on track. Obviously, you didn't get to drive the Fiesta on track, but just remembering what you yeah. drove about the Clio, and you had a few shots of that in there for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. how, how do you think the comparison was between the two? You guys basically in your reviews always go on and on and on about how the Fiesta rotates, right? Yeah. yeah. So with the Fiesta, the thing is, it does, it does it naturally, right? You just take a corner, and at some point it's just gonna, the back end is just gonna help you out, like for the turn in, mid corner, whatever. With the Clio, it doesn't do that naturally, but I just came off, uh, off a session with Gabe, our instructor. So I was okay. all about trail braking, trail braking, right? And sure. under braking, it rotates beautifully, the Clio does. But not, but, but not automatically. That's an interesting comparison. Okay. Yeah, not automatically, I mean, no. Man, I can't tell you how excited we are to have you cover the European market and stuff we don't get. I'm encouraging yeah. you right now to go find stuff that's weird or stuff where it's like, where does that come from? Because I want right. to see those cars. And I think a lot of other people do too. It just seems like you guys always get all the cool stuff and they kind of dumb it down for America for whatever reason. But you guys get the cool stuff, so you yeah. have to go drive that stuff. But we do get quite a few muscle cars now. You do, and, that, yeah. and you bring up a great point. I mean, that's actually where I want to leave it because I want to get you in some other stuff that we really like, that we have our perspective on, because I want you to put it on the Autobahn and compare it with oh, stuff yeah. there, stuff that's kind of our touchstones and our greatest hits. We're going to get you in, in some of that stuff as well, even though it's a little bit of repeat for reviews, but I want to get that perspective. If nothing else, just the fact that you've got the Autobahn to play with, that'll be cool. So what is, just so people know, what is the next thing you're in? Uh, it's a Seat Leon Cupra 290, okay. which essentially is the front wheel drive version of the Golf R. Right? Okay, cool. And again, that's not something we get here at all, so I'm just excited. I mean, it's a whole brand we haven't even talked about before for obvious reasons. Yeah. So yeah. thank you, sir, and uh, we will be seeing you again soon. All right. Bye-bye.